so today we have the topic salesforce integration with mulesoft so it's some it's a very popular topic uh, among among the developers so today we have uh, shruti with us where she will be speaking about uh, this integrations salesforce integration all right so before we start uh, i'll read out some safe harbor statement so both the speaker and the host are organizing this meetup in individual capacity only we are not representing our companies here this presentation is strictly for learning purpose only uh, organizer do not hold any responsibility that same solution will work for your business requirements this presentation is not meant for any promotional activities so a recording uh, of this meetup will be uploaded to events page within 24 hours and uh, you can ask uh, questions at any time in the chat uh, we have we will enable your mics as well and give us feedback so so today we have uh, two organizers for this meetup Shubham. Hello, Shubham. Is Shruti able to hear me now? Oh, yes. I think we lost Shubham. Yeah, we lost. Okay. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, the share screen button is not enabled for me. No, no, Sugar was sharing. That's why. That's why you cannot. Yeah, he okay. disconnected now. You can share, okay? So, I mean, well, let okay. me introduce myself. Okay. Yeah, I'm Giridhar. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. So, I'm working as a senior architect at Hashdin. So I'm a certified uh, developer and architect in both Microsoft and AWS. I'm leading this Mysore Meetup group, and I'm a Microsoft mentor as well. So today we have Shruti with us uh, to walk us through the Salesforce integration with MuleSoft. Thank you, Shruti. Over to you. Sure. So, thank you so much, Kiridhar. Yeah, thank you. So first of all, is my screen visible? Yeah, it's up now. You're an organizer, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, so good morning everyone once again uh, if i talk about myself i am currently working as a muse of developer at horizontal digital and um, i'm having around 3.5 years of total experience in MuleSoft, and uh, this is my first ever muse of meetup so thank you so much once again for joining this so uh, now we'll start first meetup as so a speaker Yes, first meetup as a speaker. Yes, that's right. Okay, so let's look at our agenda for today. First, um, we'll uh, learn about what is Salesforce. Then we'll see what are different integration patterns which are provided by Salesforce Connector. And then what are the different authentication mechanism that we can use? And what are the different operations that we can perform? And then we'll have a demo then trivia, and then we'll wrap up, okay? So uh, before starting this, uh, let me make this point clear that today we are discussing Salesforce integration with MuleSoft in which we are making calls from MuleSoft to Salesforce, not vice versa. We are not discussing the scenario in which we are making call from Salesforce to any MuleSoft application today we'll see all the scenarios in which we'll make call from MuleSoft application to Salesforce via Salesforce connector. Okay, so these are the prerequisites. We'll need uh, any point platform account. You can sign up from here if you are not having one. And then we'll need any point studio, of course, to develop our application. And then we'll also need Salesforce developer org. So uh, if you are not familiar, what is Salesforce Dev Org? So this is a full-fledged Salesforce environment in which we can develop any application or we can test them, like we can play around. 
so this is for our purpose only this is not for organization or business purpose all right and if you want to sign up for it then you can go to this url let me show you so this is what it looks like you just have to fill all these fields and you are ready to go so now uh, I am not doing it because I am already having my developer org, so I will be using that one. All right. Next. So, uh, what is Salesforce? Uh, if you are familiar or not, but we'll discuss like how Salesforce came into picture, what technologies that we were using before Salesforce. So, right now we are living a living in a data driven world. All right, there are so many uh, technologies like AI, machine learning, and they are generating a huge amount of data. So we need something to manage such a large scale of data. But when Salesforce were not there, so what we are using? We were using paperwork, and then we shifted to Excel, and then to databases. But the, all these technologies were not enough to manage such a large amount of data and then uh, so there was a need for some management tool to manage such a large amount of data so then crm came into the picture but the thing is when crm came so every organization started to create their own crms so and then they were hosting them on their own servers so Th this was very time consuming and costly. So this problem was solved by Salesforce. Salesforce gave us a cloud platform, which anyone can use and anyone can access their data from anywhere. So let's see. Salesforce is an American company and it is headquartered in San Francisco, California. It is world number one CRM, which is customer relationship management platform. We can use it to manage all the customer data and we can deliver amazing customer experience. We can use it to organize, uh, unite our marketing, sales, commerce, service and other IT team on just one platform. And there are many subsidiaries provided by Salesforce like Viewsoft is one of them. <clears throat> and others are Quip, Pardot. Heroku, Tableau, Slack, Velocity, etc. Salesforce helps companies to connect with customers in a whole new way. So it provides different cloud services such as Commerce Cloud, Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, Data Cloud, Marketing Cloud and Experience Cloud. And there are many other also such as Health Cloud, etc. Okay. So if we uh, compare Salesforce with Excel or database, then uh, if you see in Excel sheet, we are having different different columns for different fields which are which belongs to any table. Similarly, in database, let's suppose you have created one database table. So all the records are present in the corresponding rows and column represent all the different fields related to that particular table. Similarly, if we look in Salesforce, so we are having the similar structure. If you see, this is the account object in Salesforce and here, these are different fields, account name, account site, billing state, phone type, all these are fields related to account object. So if you compare database to Salesforce, so table can be compared to the objects and fields are these records sorry fields are the column names which are here and database records can be compared to the salesforce record so if you can see here there are 13 records which are present in this account object if i walk you through it in salesforce let me walk you through this is what the salesforce looks like if you log in into your Salesforce or this is the home page that you will land upon. This is this button is called app launcher. Click on app launcher and search. 
accounts. Okay, this view is called list view. Let me click on all account. Now it will show all the accounts that are present in my Salesforce org. Right now there are 13 of them and we can switch between these different object. Let's suppose I want to see what all contacts are present. So I can click on this contact tab and I can click on all contacts. Then it will show all the contacts that are present in my Salesforce org. So you got the concept, right? Let us go back to presentation. Okay. okay. So these are some things that we should remember about Salesforce. As we already saw, there are standard objects. So standard objects are the objects provided by Salesforce. And all, all these objects we, which we just saw, those are standards object only. But we can also create custom object according to our need. So these are called custom object. And then we can access all these objects by using tab. So if you see, these are tabs related to the corresponding objects. Campaigns, dashboard, report. This is tab. All right. And then we have Salesforce application. So Salesforce application is a logical container for all the objects, tabs, processes, and services associated with a given business function. So if you see, if you go back to our Salesforce org, you, you might be wondering where is the Salesforce app? So this one, sales is the Salesforce app, which combines all these different tabs and objects. And we can switch between these different app. Like if you click on app launcher and if you click on view all, then we can see there are these. These are the apps provided by Salesforce and we can switch between them. We can click on service. Then we land on our service application, which deals with only these kind of objects. All right, let's go back to our presentation. Okay, now we'll discuss what are the relationship in Salesforce. So if we want to combine or relate one object to another object, then there are different kinds of relationships provided by Salesforce. They are master detail, lookup, self relationship, hierarchical relationship. So let me give you a brief overview what these relationships are. So master detail relationship is just a kind of parent child relationship, but it is tightly coupled relationship in which master is necessary. You can't define child uh, without the master. Let's suppose you want to create any child record. So then there is a condition that master should be present, but this is not the case with lookup, lookup relationship. In lookup, this is also a parent-child relationship, but in this relationship, master or parent is not necessary. We can define the child record without the master. So this is loosely coupled and above is tightly coupled. And then we have self-relationship in which any object is related to itself. And then there is another kind of relationship, which is hierarchical relationship in which uh, several objects are uh, like related to one another, uh, just like a hierarchy. So that's that was a brief. And let's let me give you an example of standard object which are account and contact. So they are related to one another in a lookup kind of relationship. We can understand this by going into our Salesforce org and opening an account. Click on all account. Let me just open any random account. Okay. I have opened edge communication. If we go to details page, details tab, then it will show all the details related to this account. And if we go to related tab, and if you can see here, there are two contacts present. So these are the contacts which is which is related to this edge communication account. So it, we can see that 
there are two contacts are present so these are child record and account is parent if we open these contact records in different tabs let me go to first contact if you see the account name present here is edge communication which is the same account which we opened before similarly for this contact also the account name is edge communication so that's how these different uh, object records are related to one another in a relationship all right okay let me uh, ask like if there are any questions till now or we are good to go we are uh, good i think does anyone have any questions as of now i think they're good you can continue what's more with the self relationship okay so if you see like if there is any condition in which we want okay so we just see we just saw that there is one account uh, record and there are multiple contacts which are associated with it but what if we want any uh, any contact let's suppose uh, there is one organization in which one is manager right manager contact and we want to uh, relate the manager contact with the corresponding employee object right so those employee object are also related a uh, a uh, contact object and the manager is also a contact object but there is still a hierarchy between them right so all these employee objects employee contact records are also related to uh, the manager contact record so in that way we can define a uh, self uh, relationship in the contact object i mean if we talk about master detail and lookup relationship so these relationship related to different object like account and contact but if we talk about self relationship so parent will also be a, a same object and then the all the child record belong to the same parent object you got the point right am i clear yeah i think yes you can continue yeah. okay we have one question uh, like what is lookup okay so as we just discussed lookup is just another kind of relationship so these account and contacts are related to lookup relationship okay let me open setup object manager here we can uh, manage all the objects and their corresponding fields so if i go to account sorry let's go to contact and then if i go to field and relationship of contact object you see we are having one field as account name and its data type is lookup and if i want to create a new contact let me just create a new contact so you see there is one field called account name so here we can select whatever different account that are present inside our salesforce or so this relationship is a lookup relationship but why is it a lookup relationship you see it is not mandatory like this field is not mandatory the only mandatory field is last name so i can create the contact record without giving account name also like let me just create it dummy contact save so you see it got saved without giving account name so in lookup relationship parent is not always necessary but we can give according to our uh, need so are we good to go ahead or yes yes okay i got a question 
Mm -hmm. Is this lookup relationship one to one or one to many? Because so in sales, it can be one to one. Many. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It can be one to one and one to many also. Oh, you say it's it's kind of like the same features like the one that we have in Salesforce. The lookup relationship in uh, Salesforce yes, is also yes. okay. Thank yes. you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. All right, let's move ahead. So uh, we were comparing Salesforce to database, right? So like if we want to access certain record or filter out any kind of record, so what we use, we use SQL, right? So similarly, if we want to access our Salesforce record, then what we use, we use Sockel. So it is a similar kind of language, uh, just like SQL, it is Salesforce object query language, which is used to query the records related to Salesforce object from our Salesforce org. So it only queries whatever data which is already present. And we can use Sockel when you want to retrieve data from a single object or from multiple object. And they, they, are, they can be related to one another. That's not a problem. And then we can also get the count of number of record that meets specified criteria. So we can filter out records by using where condition. And then we can sort them. And we can also retrieve data from number, date, or checkbox field. And this is just an example how a typical SOCL query would look like. So if you can see, this is similar to SQL. We can select different fields from any object. So here in SQL, we use table name. But here we will use a Salesforce object. So here we are using account and then we are checking if the account name is newly or not. So it will give us record. But uh, there should be a difference, right, between SQL and SQL. So yeah, there is a difference. With SQL, we can modify data in database, right? We can change data, we can delete records, we can insert data, but not with SQL. With SQL, we can always query data, but we cannot insert. Like we cannot modify with SQL. We always have to use like Salesforce UI or Apex data manipulation language, but not from SQL. And one more thing, uh, in SQL, we use select star statement, right? But in SQL, we cannot use select star. So this is the difference, but otherwise it is same. All right. So, okay. So just to it, Shruti, like uh, if you don't mind, uh, in uh, SQL, we can use fields all. It works same as how select star work in database. Yeah, yeah. Field? But uh, yeah. yeah, that's that can be but i was just talking specifically about select star okay. yeah okay so if you want to query the data where you will go in salesforce we'll go to salesforce developer console let me walk you through if you click on setup and then developer console Click on query editor. Okay, I have already written one query. Let me click on execute. It will show us one row. So it will show results here and it will show all the fields which I have provided in the query. So if I remove this condition, now it will show all the contacts because I have removed the where condition. So right now, all these contacts are present in my Salesforce org. There is one more tool which we can use. This is this was uh, this was Salesforce Developer Console, but there is one more tool which is provided by Salesforce, which is Salesforce Workbench. Let me show you that also. Go to Google, write Salesforce Workbench. Workbench. Click on I agree. It will automatically log you in Salesforce because I have already logged in. 
right? Then click on query, circle query. So this tool is very handy for all those people which are not very familiar with uh, circle because here, uh, if you don't know how to write a query, then we can just select the object. Let us select account. And then it will show us what all fields we want to query. So we can select multiple field at once. So if you see it, it generated the query automatically. Like we don't have to write query. And we can also sort filter according to our need and hit on query and it will provide us the result. So this is also a very great tool to check if our circle query is correct or not, because when we will use Salesforce connector, then we have to write query, circle query in them to fetch the data. All right. Now we'll talk about Salesforce connector. Okay, so first of all, uh, what Salesforce connector do? It is just a uh, out of the box functionality, a connector provided by any point platform in exchange to connect to Salesforce and to query data, to delete, to upsert, create new record. Like there are so many operations which are provided by Salesforce connector. So if we go to our any point platform, let me just walk you through that also so i want for it okay my session is expired let me log in again okay so you see there are so many Salesforce connector that are there, but they are cloud specific. If you see, this is Salesforce Marketing Cloud, Salesforce Einstein Analytics. There is one more Salesforce Composite Connector. But today in this uh, specific meetup, we are talking only about Salesforce Connector. So there is one more Salesforce Composite Connector. How Salesforce Connector is different from Composite One? So if you want to query or do any operation on just one object, then we'll use Salesforce connector. But what if you want to uh, query multiple object or do certain kind of operation on multiple object at once, then we'll use Salesforce composite connector. But today we will not discuss this one. Let's keep it for another meetup. We'll today talk about Salesforce connector specifically. So now the question arises like, why to use Salesforce connector? Because there is one Salesforce REST API is also provided by Salesforce to query data. Then why should we use Salesforce connector instead of that REST API? Because uh, when we talk about REST API, it is also a great tool. But the thing is certain kind of coding is involved in case of REST API. Also, we have to prepare request format, response format, all the configuration. I mean, we have to configure all these things, but we can avoid all these steps if we use Salesforce connector because all these things are explicitly provided by Salesforce connector. So it is a, a very nice tool and the connection is also very quick. It is not time consuming. It saves our time. So that's why we use Salesforce connector. And uh, the best part is it is free, so why not? All right. Now uh, we'll see like uh, certain use cases in which we can use Salesforce connector. Okay, so we can use Salesforce connector like if we want to do any ERP integration, ERP is enterprise resource planning. There are certain kind of ERPs available in market such as Microsoft Dynamics, NetSuite, SAP Business One. So if you want to integrate our data with all these kind of uh, tool, then we can use Salesforce Connector. We can also use Salesforce Connector in case of data aggregation. Let's suppose we want to collect data from several different Salesforce or, or other CRMs or other ERP system or other databases then we can use this. We can also use it in case of legacy modernization. 
so if we are migrating from any legacy uh, database or uh, legacy system to a cloud based system or to salesforce so for these kind of migrations we can use salesforce connector also like uh, if we want to connect to any uh, tool which is uh, service based or uh, like just like service now then also we can use salesforce connector to give a customized customer experience let's move so these are some integration pattern which are used by salesforce connector first one is remote call in so what do we mean by remote call in let's suppose uh, we want to access any external system and we want to uh, change something in that or delete or do any kind of operation or any external system want to access our system or salesforce so there is kind of a technique which we use that is remote call so in that we can use salesforce connector and it we can also use in batch data synchronization let's suppose we want to access same same operation with remote call in but the difference is in remote call in we work on a small amount of data but in batch data synchronization we deal with a large amount of data so we do our operation in batches next is request reply rpi in request reply rpi uh, for example salesforce initiates a process in any remote system then it will wait for that remote system to finish the process and then it accepts the control again and then do further processing so it is a kind of synchronous processing which is happening but in case of fire and forget rpi it is a kind of async process so if salesforce initiates a process in a third party system so it will receive the acknowledgement that okay the process is initiated but it will not wait it will not wait it will go with its own execution so is it a kind of async process and then we have user interface update based on data changes in which like uh, we can do any kind of ui change if any uh, change occurs in a third party system so we can synchronize that also so these were some integration patterns and now there are so many operations provided by salesforce connector these are some of them create delete query search upset okay so these we can understand these by reading them but with upset what upset do first it checks whether these records are already present in our salesforce org or not if it is already present then it will update and if it is not present then it will insert the data so two kind of operation it can do then we have update on new object on modified object so okay today we will discuss create query and upset in our demo all right let's move to uh, the different authentication mechanism used by salesforce connector so before that like if anyone having any question till now what is the difference between query and search okay so these are there is not such a difference i mean we can say that these are identical in nature but uh, so in query uh, i mean there are they are identical in nature because i have used them there is no much difference so if you like i'll show you this is salesforce okay so if you see there are many similar kind of operations are present like if you see we have query and then we have query all so these are similar kind of operations not much difference Shruti, okay. back to your previous slide, uh, the integration patterns. Can can you give an example of the last one again? Uh, user interface. Okay, upload. user interface. All right. 
So let's suppose you have uh, made one application uh, for Salesforce Experience Cloud. So what a Salesforce Experience cl Cloud does, it provide a connected experience like on UI. So it is an interactive UI and you the con like the requirement is on UI, certain kind of uh, data should get changed if any uh, data gets changed in your remote application or remote database. So we can do that. Like if any change related to UI, so those changes comes in uh, this condition, like this integration pattern, anything related to UI comes under this. So, so is it like, see general, all the other ones, they are pretty straight, right? They are normal integration patterns, yes. which you have other systems on one side of integration. In mm -hmm. this case, what it would be one side of your MuleSoft integration would be Salesforce via connect or what would be the other side, a UI? Okay. So at one side, we can have our Salesforce UI or our website, we can say okay. that, or our application. And on the other side, we can have any kind of remote system or database. Okay. But the change would reflect in the UI. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Let's uh, proceed. Now we'll discuss what are the different authentication mechanisms which are provided by Salesforce Connector. So uh, before that, we'll discuss like what is the difference between authentication and authorization. So authentication happens before authorization and authentication checks the identity of a user. But uh, if we talk about authorization, so it grants access to the authenticated user like that user what that user can access what files what data it can access into the system so like let's suppose i am logging in as a certain kind of user in salesforce and i am so i am authenticated because i have used my username and password so after this authentication after i logged into my salesforce account there is a uh, there can be a case where I cannot access certain kind of record, certain kind of account data or contact data because I am not authorized to access that data. So there is a difference between authentication and authorization. Right. So there are five different kind of authentication mechanism are provided. Basic authentication, OAuth 2.0, OAuth JWT, OAuth SAML and OAuth username password. All right. So now, uh, like how to recognize what authentication mechanism we should use. So let's suppose uh, in basic authentication, what we do, we provide our username and password because we are the owner of our Salesforce org and we have these things. In certain cases, we are not the admin and we are working on this kind of or on which we are not the owner or we can use all the other kinds of authentications. Let's, so first of all, we should know like what is OAuth, what OAuth does. So with OAuth, we can, uh, it authorizes user to access certain, um, certain kind of data so this is a kind of authorization mechanism, not the authentication mechanism. Like in simple words, like if we talk about uh, Facebook, so if you want to play some video game or to down, uh, access any kind of Zomato or like Uber Eats application, so we can see that it provides facility to first authenticate ourselves with the Facebook ID or Gmail ID. Right. If we want, if we don't want to provide our personal data to Zomato, what we can do, we can log in with Facebook. So then we don't have to provide our personal data to Zomato, right? So in that way, we can do our authentication and then uh, with OAuth, we can access the data. So that we will see in our further slides with connected app, like how OAuth 
rest, rest, restricts the data with certain kind of permissions. Okay. But, but Shruti, is it client credentials or you're talking about the user? Because generally in integrations, it is an application on the other side and which can have a user or might not have a user, right? So it could be, let's say I'm trying to create cases in Salesforce and let's say I'm any XYZ application managing cases or through which I create cases in uh, success factor, right? So there mm -hmm. could be a user on that application or it could be a job running end of the day with both yes. success factor, sorry, uh, yes. Salesforce. Yes, you right. are right. So, so, yeah. So, is it at system user level or is it at the individual? It can be also at the user level, right? Uh, the the user on the other application trying to create a case, not directly in Salesforce, but trying to do it in a different application. From there, you are propagating the user. Does this support that? Okay. So right now we are talking about like. Uh, we are accessing data from mules of two Salesforce. So first of all, we are the Salesforce user in this case. Okay. So that's a system user. Yes. Okay. But uh, what if you don't want to give your personal credential, like a username or password or password in specific Correct. case? So then we, we can't use this basic authentication, right? Because it is not that secure because we are exposing our password to mm -hmm. third party. So there, so in that case, we can use the other kind of uh, mechanisms. Okay. That we will see in uh, next slide. So today we will discuss in detail basic authentication or 2.0 and what username and password. Okay. <clears throat> so if we talk about basic authentication, so for this Salesforce configuration, we just need our Salesforce username, corresponding password, uh, the security token. I will uh, talk about security token in next slide and then authorization URL. So this will be the endpoint of our Salesforce org. It is explicitly provided by uh, this config. And then if we talk about auth username password, so in this case, what we will need, we will need a consumer key, consumer secret, username password, and then security token. So I'll talk about like how we can generate consumer key, consumer secret for our Salesforce org and the security token also. And then there is a third way or 2.0. So in this case, we don't need password. We just need consumer key, consumer secret, a listener configuration that we are using in our current application, a callback path, authorized path, external callback URL. So what this callback path is, uh, here we we write slash callback. So this is the uh, URL which are connected. Okay. So we are calling. Let's suppose I have generated one application in AnyPoint Studio, and I am making a call from Postman to that application. So I'll use this URL from from my local host. So this. Uh, endpoint will ma should match with this callback path. So that's why we use slash callback. And this is used by our Salesforce endpoint and the authorized path. This is also used by our sales Salesforce endpoint and we provide authorized. So what will do? It will authorize the token. It will grant us the token for OOT dance. So what OOT dance is, let's suppose First, our mule application requests the authorization server and get the access token. So to get the access token, it will use this, this authorization path. And after that, it will go back to Salesforce, to resource server, to access the resource. And why we need callback? When we get our authorization token, it will send us the token back to from where the request has came. So in 
uh, our case the request has came from localhost callback so that's why we have written here callback all right now uh, as we already saw that we need security token for our authentication mechanism so how we can get the security token so the security token is just a unique alpha numeric token related to any salesforce org which we can use uh, to access like let's suppose if you are accessing your salesforce data from other ip address so how will you recognize that it is coming from a trusted uh, source so in that way case we can use security token it is a case sensitive alphanumeric code and it is tied with our password so let's suppose if you reset your password then security token will also get reset and then uh, we'll also see like how we can create a salesforce connected app uh, i'll walk you through with the salesforce connected app in demo but let's just see what it is in brief so a salesforce connected app is a framework that enables an external application to integrate with salesforce so it provides us the other uh, config properties such as client id or client secret and we can get those and we can access our salesforce org but here is a catch so it provide restricted access why we use salesforce connected app to provide restricted access like if we go back to all these let's suppose if we are making a connection with basic authentication in this case we are not providing a restricted access we are providing all the access to to any user by using username password we are not restricting anything so that's why we use a connected app to provide restricted access we don't want like all the data to be exposed to any third party so we can specify the permissions in this connected app so now uh, first so now it's demo time first we will see how to generate security token then we will see how to create a connected app and then we will see like how to uh, do say, certain kind of operation from any point studio so now first go to salesforce okay click on setup not on setup sorry uh, click on this profile icon go to settings here under my personal information go to this option reset my security token from here you can reset your security token i will not reset it because i have already having my security token but what if you want to know like what your organization security token is you can click on this button and then you will get an email from salesforce in which they they will provide you the security token so you can copy paste it from there all right now we will see what are connected app click all go to setup go to apps app manager here we can create our connected app so how you can create your connected app there is one option for creating one new connected app click on new connected app provide some name like test connected app a email to generate client id client secret uh, enable this button this checkbox enable oauth setting then it will ask us the callback url so here you will provide the url from where you are making a call so right now 
we are making call from local host so we can write http it you can write sorry and shruti this activity would be performed by the admin on the salesforce side yes okay and shared with a probable consumer let's say i was the one who is an external system wants to get in uh, salesforce and then i will request the salesforce team and their admin will go in there create a connected app on my behalf and obviously select what all has to be granted for me and then share details with me yes and also like uh, when we work on a uh, real time project so there will be a user call integration user that will be created in uh, salesforce org so if that integration user is having permission to create such kind of apps then we can also create one got it no need to contact the admin sure thanks right call back and uh, like it depends on your project need like what kind of permission you want but right now i am selecting all like you can select all condition and then we can add right we are good to go so it is saying that changes can take up to it was saying that uh, the changes can take up to 10 minutes to take effect and if we delete this org then it will delete all the connected app also right okay it will take 10 minutes to take effect so let me go back to my app because i have created one connected app before so we will use that one for our demo purpose so this one i have already created yesterday we will use this one if we want to access the client id and client secret okay all right just a minute okay from here manage consumer detail consumer key and secret if we click on this option to oh. it is asking me verification code just a minute let me check my mail just a minute everyone i am checking my mail to get this verification code Five six six. Okay, now see, uh, it is showing us the consumer key and consumer secret. We can copy these details to use in our application. Now, I'll go to any point studio. Actually, I have already created the flows to save some time. so we will just quickly walk through all of them so by first flow is query all we are doing a query all operation from salesforce connector so this this is the salesforce connector here are all the operation provided by it so it is not by default available in this mule palette like if i create a new new project let me create one dummy finish so see in this dummy project salesforce connector is not there so what you will do click on add modules here you can see salesforce connector drag it from here and then we, you can use so now let me close this dummy project all right so now we are having our salesforce connector drag query operation here in listener config just a listener config and point is get all contact now we will see how it is configured 
first go to our connector configuration click on edit see i have used basic authentication here not oauth one so what we are using we are using our username i have provided my password token and url okay so i have uh, captured all these configuration properties in config.yaml so let me open that cancel sources config.yaml so this is my username this is the token and this is the url our salesforce endpoint so these things i have provided in my salesforce config you can see let us test connection first if it is successful or not okay test connection successful that means we are good to query our salesforce org what if we provide wrong detail let me provide wrong password now if i click on test connection it will fail so you have to see invalid username password security token so it will throw this error rectify it once again okay now it is successful okay okay go back to message flow all right so this was the simple salesforce config with basic authentication and i have written sockel query here we are fetching id name email phone mailing address owner id from contact all right and then because salesforce returns data in java format so i have in this transform message i have written output application slash json because i want my output in json format and then just payload so now i will deploy this just wait for one minute Thank you for patience, everyone. It will it will take only one minute. Shruti, I have a question. <clears throat> so you're doing this in dev in in the developer console? Yes. Yes. Or no, no, this is it? no, no, no. Developer console is something okay. So, where so, are you doing this? This is uh, okay. This is Anypoint Studio. Here, we use Anypoint Studio to create our mule applications, to create our flows. And uh, where do I developer point? Uh, um, sorry, okay. I got Okay, all right. So this is a, a Eclipse based application to develop our mule flows or mule application. This is different than developer console. So where do right? I? Like, okay, okay, fine. I have uh, provided one link in starting. Like these are the prerequisites. So what you will need? This is you will need MuleSoft AnyFont platform account. So this was a uh, new soft any, any point platform account in which we access the exchange and then we have new soft any point studio. So this you have to download. This is application. Okay. So if you search on Google any point studio. So you can download it from here, like just provide your operating system, agree, download. Okay. It will start download. Let me cancel that. So this is Anypoint Studio. Here we are now uh, developing this new application in which we are using the Salesforce connector. Developer console is another thing. It is provided by Salesforce. Like if you click on this gear icon setup. Yes, yes. Developer no, console. Developer. 
I just didn't yeah. know what extension you were using. If you were using an extension, or you know, or so you're using this any connect is a is is a, is a connector, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Like so, this developer console is provided by Salesforce, in which we can create Apex classes, triggers, and we can also use this query editor to query our Salesforce. But this endpoint studio is provided by MuleSoft. Okay. These are two different things. Like, so am I clear now? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So it is deployed. We'll just send one request from Postman. This is our endpoint get all contact. If I click on send, so it will fetch all those fields which we have provided in the SOCL query. Email on ready phone, you see, and it is provided in JSON format, like array. Okay. Now this is, this one is done. Now we will see like, so in this uh, request, we are not using any query parameters, right? So if we want to use query parameter, so for that, I have implemented another flow. So here, listener, we have get contact endpoint. In transform message, what I'm doing, I'm just fetching the query parameter from the attributes. And if we are not sending any, then we are making them default as null. And if they are not null, then we will query so this is Sokal query, but this is little bit changed from previous one. Previously, we were not using any filter criteria, but now because we are sending query parameter, so now we have to use filter criteria by using where. So I have provided name and we are checking with whatever uh, data we are sending in query parameter. You can define your query parameter here. We are fetching nameware from where start nameware. But what if, if we are not sending any query parameter, then it will go to default and it will execute this Salesforce query. And after this, I'm just changing the payload to JSON. All right. So this was our endpoint, get contact. Let me hit that from Postman, get contact. And now we are sending a query parameter. So let me click send. See, so it is now only fetching that particular record which is having name is equals to Rose Gonzalez. And if I remove this from request, then it will fetch all of them, all the contact records, just like the previous call. All right. And uh, in this also, I have used uh, basic authentication. I will also show like OAuth one in another flow, right? Now, if you want to create some record, okay. So for that, I have created another flow. So now we want to create some record. So we will send some data from our end. So it will be a kind of post request. So if I click on this listener and click on advanced, see, I have, I have written post in allowed method. So it will be a post call. And uh, I've also created one schema in which I'm accepting all these fields from like whatever data which we are sending from post request. And I am just uh, mapping it with the fields which are present in Salesforce. So for that I have used map operator. So this is just a simple transform logic. And uh, here I have written application slash Java because Salesforce accept data in this format and then this is the create operation of Salesforce connector. So we are just sending the payload and then at last transform message to see the output. 
and then what is the end point create contact okay let me hit that from postman so if you see uh, here the request is a post request create contact and this is our data these two records that we want to create i am sending it here in body so these are so when i click send these two different contact will get created in salesforce so let me click send what it is saying true all right let me check in my salesforce or if they got created or not okay go to contacts uh, shruti sorry to interrupt uh, mm -hmm. can we objects also duplicate objects i mean duplicate, duplicate. Uh, fields like uh, yeah duplicate uh, duplicate fields. records yeah okay so if we are using this operation this create okay let mm -hmm. me show you so i have like i have sent this data once right right so let me first check the data if they are they got created or not then we send it once again and then we will okay. see like if duplicate got created or not okay, okay. okay. so if you see here it is peter parker and tony stark so it got created right now i'll click on send once again okay different ids are present now if i refresh so duplicate should be present now so see now we have two so okay, now can you, we you might be... it like some uh, i mean not duplicate value on basis of email mm -hmm. or anything yes so like we can do that but then we have to uh, select some another operation so like if we always use create then it will only create but if you want to check like if they are already present or not then we can use absurd so okay. that was my another like flow so like okay. if you are using create then it will create as you have already seen right right oh okay. got it. so it just depends on our requirement like what kind of operation that we want to do okay where was i sorry i got confused uh, okay now we will discuss this absurd operation so in for this absurd operation what it will do it will first check like okay these records that we are sending if they are already present in our salesforce org or not if they are already present then if we are updating any field then it will update or if they are not present then it will create new so what i am using in listener this is our end point this is also a okay so this is not a post request like if you see in create we were using post right but here we are using put so if you are familiar with put what it will do it will update or uh, i mean create right this is our config and in transform message this is similar to the previous one we are mapping our data to salesforce and here we are using basic authentication only okay and then transforming right so let us send our request to absurd now okay these two records are already there let me delete them or change send okay they should have got created because there are they are new 
right now. Let me refresh. Okay, see, they got created because they were not previously present, Queen Stacy. But now, if I update any of the field, like let us update the phone numbers. Nine, I add nine nine nine. Okay. And then hit. So now, uh, if you see here, it is saying successful is equals to true. And now I have updated the phone number and click on send. Okay, now it is saying successful true. This operation got successful. But if you can see here, after created, it is saying that false. So these uh, records are not created once again they are just updated if you see in salesforce org let me refresh there are no two records of these kind only one of them and if i click on this record our phone number got updated right because now these records were already present that's why our phone number got updated all right so we are done with basic authentication scenarios all all these scenarios were of basic authentication now let me stop this project close this one now we will see over two okay so first, let us discuss the Salesforce config. So here, uh, now we are using OAuth version 2.0. I have provided this consumer key consumer secret in my config.yml. So we are taking those properties from config file, if you can see. And uh, let me open it once again. We are these authorization URL token, they were already provided by this Salesforce config only. We don't have to provide them. We have to provide our callback path authorize and this external callback URL from where we are calling it. So we are calling it from localhost. And uh, yeah, the, these were the only mandatory fields that mandatory connection properties that we have to provide. Let us hit test connection why oh, authorization dance not performed for okay so we will get this uh, error because this is oauth 2.0 and what dance should happen before accessing the re resource mm -hmm. so how can we do that so go back to salesforce go back to your browser and write http slash authorize because now we are not authorized to access that okay what happened okay because we have not deployed First, we have to deploy this application. Mm -hmm. It is getting deployed. It is deployed now. We'll go back to our browser and 
this endpoint It is taking so much time. Just a minute, everyone. Let me check if I stop previous one. Okay, it is. Okay. We'll try once again. Thank you so much for your patience, everyone. Okay, it is deployed. We have that. Okay, now error is also gone. This is our endpoint accounts. Okay, once again. So it is saying that address already it used bind, but I am not using 8081 anywhere else. So I don't know why this error is coming, but I think our flow is working fine because when I'm sending request from Postman, it is giving me the result. See. I think uh, we are having some kind of warning. That's why. Okay. 
I need to look into my endpoint platform for this endpoint studio. Sorry. I think it is giving wrong error because our flow is working fine. Like if we go back to our OAuth config 2.0, these things we have provided. And we are also getting the response. If I'm hitting this endpoint, which is accounts. Okay, let me close this one. I need to look into my endpoint studio once for this. Now we will see third kind of authentication, which is what with password. So here also, this is same kind of flow. This is the listener config. Endpoint is accounts. We are querying data. We are using this query. If we go to our Salesforce config, so now we are using OAuth username password. We have provided all this configuration detail in my config.yaml. So from there, I am fetching this. But the thing is, for this type of uh, authentication mechanism, we have to provide the password and also the security token. All right. If I click on this connection. This connection successful. OK. Let me deploy this one. Right, it will take one minute. Okay, it is deployed. Let me hit this endpoint once again. And it is also giving me the response. So it is working as expected. So this was our demo. Like I've only prepared these many use cases. And yeah, let us move ahead. Okay. So thank you everyone for listening patiently and uh, keeping up with that demo. I'll in my free time, I'll look into why that error was coming. Uh, though our uh, flow was working fine and we were also getting response in Postman, I need to look into my Endpoint Studio. But that's all for today. Thank you. And if you are, you guys are having any question, then put them forward. Thank you, Shruti. Does anyone have any questions? I think there was one question. Let me get to that. Something related to tag, it was. Tag? Uh, yeah, actually, I asked that question. Uh, in SOQL query, can we write like uh, apart from a, a object names? Can we write as a tag names also? Can we use that? Okay, so actually, uh, those were not tags. Those were tabs. So you are talking about these things, right? No, these are the, like object name, but we can define tags also for this, right? As you showed in the PPT. So with tag, what you mean to say? I mean, in SOQL, suppose you write like uh, select ID from accounts. So if we give mm -hmm. some custom tag, like uh, some salary account, and then we, can we use that salary account also in SOQL, like select ID from salary account? 
So first of all, the SQL structure is that uh, first we have to provide the field, whatever field we want to fetch from any particular object and then from object name. So we, we can only provide the object name. Okay, okay, okay. got it. I, th I think you have to, uh, you have to use uh, SOSL, so Salesforce object search language for that, for, for okay. searching using tags. Okay, oh, okay. so you SOSL. are referring to SOSL. So that we can do in SOSL, but not in SQL. Okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Thanks, Shubham. Thanks, Shubham. Let's see if we have any more questions. Anyone? Uh, your mic is enabled. You can ask questions. 